Hi, this is Bob, working on an old uh, Heathkit SB610 monitor scope. These are a real nice monitor scope, and there's a lot of them out there. This one had a peculiar problem. I had run into this problem many, many years ago, working on color television sets. I recall a TV set that had a raspy, crackly sound in the audio, and come to find out that what was happening was the high voltage connection for the focus, which was on the back of the CRT, was leaking due to dust and dirt that had gotten into the socket. I cleaned it all out and that color TV worked fine. There had been a couple of guys worked on that TV before I did and they couldn't find the problem. But uh, I finally located it after being very persistent and uh, spending a lot of time too. Anyhow, this particular uh, unit here uh, ha has got an unusual problem you know, along the same lines. And uh, what's happening here, I'm turning it around. There we go. Well, what's happening here, I'm going to turn up the, uh, I got this little uh, FT-857 running here, which is connected right there through the coax there's nothing else connected to the SB610 hear that? there we go that's the kind of thing I've been having a problem with so I found out it was this socket again, and uh, let me turn that off, and you can see the noise go away, but what I did, I made up a new back, I, I drilled these little, there was two little hollow brass rivets that held this back piece on here and I thought I will drill that out and I will clean that in there which I did but it still had the problem and I cleaned the little back piece but I did notice that with the back piece off it did not do it anymore so it's the back piece here so what I did I made a new back piece and this back piece is made out of Lexan plastic and Lexan is very, very good insulator. And I'm doing this one-handed. And also, I used a 440 tap. And I tapped the holes that were in the socket. And you got to do that very carefully because you could break the socket. Of course, if it's not working at all, sometimes it's worth taking that chance. Okay, so we've got the Lexan plastic piece now replacing that other piece on the back of the socket. And I'm just going to snug these up. I've got split ring lock washers underneath these little screws and I'm just snugging them up with a small pocket screwdriver because those threads cut into the socket with the 440 tap are not very deep and I'm fighting the uh, sound of the uh, 857 here okay so uh, now let's turn this back on there we go it'll take it just a second to warm up here Now we got the SB610 operating again. I can get a little tiny little pop once in a while when I touch it. It's not like it was. It seems to be doing so much better. I wonder if that just didn't kind of a microphonic condition there, I think. But that noise is gone, and it's doing a pretty good job. Now I also, while I had this out, did some other changing. I changed the uh, 40 microfarad capacitor here. 
a couple of point ones, and I took these little selenium rectifiers out and I replaced them with five 1 kV silicon rectifiers in series for each one which I encased in heat shrink tubing and uh, that worked out really nice. It increased the uh, high voltage by about 200 volts uh, because it was sagging a little bit so it's working really good and this uh, shield here has been banged up a few times but it still works anyhow it's an oldie but a goodie I use it here on the workbench and I just wanted to show you about that noise here like I say I think that's like a microphonic or something it's not really making that noise like it did so I just wanted to show you guys what that is and maybe save somebody out there a lot of trouble trying to figure that out like I did so that said, everybody, the uh, Heathkit SB610 oscilloscope repaired 73s and good DX.